What's up Grandmaster, Igor Smirnov is here and today I'd like to share with you one of the most fascinating games I saw over the last couple of months at least, played by none other than Mikhail Talblain White against an unknown opponent and Tal starts with a pawn to e4, Black responds with a pawn to c5 and this game is truly a great example of attack and that's Tal at his best, that's why we love his games and he's demonstrating how to attack and use various sudden tactical opportunities. Now we are going into the Sicilian defense, the night operation, the most popular operation of Sicilian defense played by Fischer, Kasparov and many other players. Bishop g5, the move which was considered the main line in the past, nowadays it's a bit less popular even though it's still a very good option for white. The intent is pretty clear, you're putting pressure along this diagonal and potentially you are developing your pieces of the queen side so that your king is ready to castle there in the future. Black goes pawn e6, white continues with pawn f4, establishing the central control as well as preparing potentially the attack in the center by playing pawn to e5. But black simply ignores that and plays the move b5, which is a very interesting move. At first it may seem like a blunder, because after e5 it feels like black may be in trouble because the knight is pinned down to the queen and now it's attacked by the pawn and therefore it may seem like black is in a big trouble and is gonna lose his knight, but in reality it's not the case because black has a very interesting counter blow here, which is queen to c7. Queen escapes from the pin and now if white takes the knight here, which Tal didn't do in the actual game, but just to show you why this move does not work for white, black can respond with queen to e5 check, which delivers this double attack to the white king and bishop and therefore white does not win a piece here, black takes it back right away. Therefore let's take a move back here and see what Tal did in the actual game, he played queen to e2 instead, protecting this pawn over here in the center, therefore black can't take it anymore and they have to move their knight away from the attack, which they did by playing knight to d7. And that's the first critical and interesting moment of this game. By playing knight to d7 black attacked this central pawn twice, and at first you may feel like you want to protect this pawn somehow. But taking into account that white is ahead in development and black made a lot of pawn moves in this game, it gives you an idea that you may consider starting your attack here quickly and for the sake of this attack you may be willing to sacrifice a little bit of material. And therefore white simply castles queenside, letting black to capture the central pawn if black, if black wished to do so. However, in the actual game black didn't, he instead just continued his development, which was the right approach. Because if black tries to capture the central pawn, let's say by capturing it with the knight, then white has a very interesting combo, starting with knight takes b5, and after that there are many great moves for white here, but the most brilliant one is queen takes e5, deflecting the queen from defense of the black's king, and after that delivering this great checkmate with a rook and a bishop. A really great line, it didn't happen in the game, but it was a very interesting sideline which could happen. In the actual game though, black correctly denied this pawn sacrifice and played bishop to b7. Now it's another interesting position here. Even though white is slightly ahead in development, it feels pretty difficult for white to start any quick attack here, black seems solid and well protected. However, in this case we may recollect the second rule of the attack. The first rule was quick development, and the second one is trying to open up the position, because you want to have open lines and diagonal for your pieces so that they can attack your opponent's king in the most straightforward fashion. And with that in mind, white played another move, this time sacrificing the knight, knight takes e6. And after a pawn takes, white follows up with queen to g4, this time attacking this pawn with a queen, and all of a sudden we can see that white creates the first checkmate in threat. Black certainly noticed that and said, okay, let me just protect this pawn by playing queen to b6. And now the magician from Riga sacrifices another piece, in this case the rook, rook to d6, allowing black to capture the rook, which puts this bishop in an unfavorable position where it interferes with the queen protecting this pawn, and temporarily the pawn on e6 is undefended, and white takes the opportunity by grabbing the pawn, delivering check to the king, therefore king has to go. And now, even though the king is completely exposed and certainly white would wish to keep attacking it, but nevertheless black is also having significant material advantage and therefore white needs to be careful trying to find the best way, the most efficient way to finalize this attack. And for doing that white sacrifices one more piece, this time a bishop, it's quite spectacular how white just keeps coming, keeps sacrificing the piece with literally every move. This time the threat is queen to f7 checkmate, 
supported by the bishop, so we have this battery established along this diagonal, and of course black could just grab this bishop, and then the question is why would white want to give up their bishop? And the reason here is that it vacates this f1 square for the rook, so that now white doesn't spend any extra time and plays rook f1 check, delivering this check to the king. As Tal said many times, his motto is to sacrifice pieces to gain more time, to bring his pieces into the attack quickly, while the opponent's pieces are far away and cannot help his king. Just another cool rule of an attack. Now, the only normal way to cover the king would be going knight to f6, which brings us to the final rule of attack, look for forcing moves. And the most forcing moves is usually a check. Other forcing moves are captures and simply attacking moves. Because when you need to calculate a lot of possible options, calculating them can be a challenging task. But when you start off by looking at checks, you make your task a lot easier, because when you deliver a check, there's only a single response usually that your opponent has, and that's why you can calculate it in a much easier way. So white plays rook takes f7, s sorry, s to f6, sacrificing the second rook, and this time it completely exposes the black's king so that white can deliver this beautiful checkmate bishop to h6. Here comes a puzzle of the day, it is black to play, this time it's also Tal playing black against Barça playing white, we can see that, same to the previous game, White is a bit behind in development and his king is vulnerable, but nevertheless White is ahead in control and Black needs to find a way to crush White. If you can't find the winning move, write it down in the comments below. And by the way, if you're an advanced player, then you have an additional task. Don't just specify a single move, but try to provide the entire winning line, because it actually involves a couple following moves here, until we reach the checkmating position. Alright, also just a one quick note that the previous game that we saw, even though I saw some sources attribute this to Tal, I couldn't find the game in the database, so I'm not 100% sure it was played by Tal, but could be, you know, he became the world champion in 1960, so certainly not all of his games are in the database. Uh, either way, it seems authentic to his style and it's a great example of an attack, so I hope that you guys enjoyed it. If you enjoyed this one, you may also enjoy clicking this link and watch another video about the 5 best queen sacrifices played by Magnus Carlsen. He's not the guy who would sacrifice often, but when he does, it's a great game. Also, you may consider subscribing to the channel by clicking the link over there so that you set yourself up for the chess success in the future. Wishing you the great rest of the day. Bye.